coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I am the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to the classroom. Today we're taking a look at Tiny Polka Dot by Math for Love. Before I go on to the report card for Tiny Polka Dot, I feel that I really need to establish one point first. Now, the box is, and I measured it, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Within this little tiny box are no less than 16 games. And that greatly affects my uh, rating on this in terms of anything that I'm looking at because there's not just one game to be looking at. There's not just one game to say it plays this many players or it takes this much time or um, covers these ages or whatever. It's 16 different games and that's just, you know, without any of the other things that they suggest for advancing difficulties or creating your own games, which is very possible. I mean, 16. 16. So anyway, on to the report card. So for number of players, I give this one an A+. I mean, the games range, the, the 16 different games range from one player playing a solo game up to games which include several. So it doesn't matter what size of group that you're playing with, you know, you can pretty much accommodate several different groups, even if you are ha doing different groups. With one box, you could probably play two or three different games simultaneously because not everybody's going to be using all the same cards at the same time. I'm sure you could work that out. For the learning, I give this game an A+. I mean, for the 16 different games that are in there, each of them teaching a range of different skills from a range of different ages, I think that this is probably the most essential math game I've ever seen in that I think that every primary classroom should have this game in it without exception. I'm including a blog and I'll put a link to that blog in the comments section below and in that blog I have prepared a spreadsheet where I look at each of the 16 different games and have you included all of the different skills that each of those different different games teach as much as I could think and as what I could see. That doesn't mean that I've, I've covered them all, but from what I could see in them, and there's just like so many different skills in there uh, from number sense to subitizing to conservation of number to addition up to five, addition up to ten, uh, just subtraction. There's just so much going on in here. It's astounding. For the fun, I give the fun a B. I think the games are fun. I don't think it's, um, I think the kids are going to certainly do enjoy doing this far more than any kind of worksheets or drills or anything like that. This is a fun way to, to play games, particularly if they're playing with an adult or something that they can just, you know, sit back and enjoy the experience of just that social time. Uh, or with some friends and enjoying that social time and, and playing and you know don't not worrying so much about the math and if they make mistakes no big deal don't make such a big deal of it focus on the fun let them have fun let them help each other play don't don't worry about the competition and winning and losing and all this just just play to have fun and I think you'll get a lot more out of this time I give the time an A I mean the the setup time is is minimal the Strike time is minimal. It's just cards. And the, the play times, you know, again, depending on how long you want to be playing for, there's many different games you could be playing, each with a range of different times and things. It's just uh, very flexible in terms of whatever your needs may be. Cost, I'm going to be like really conservative here and say that the cost, I'm going to give an A. I'm saying that only because I don't know what it costs yet. Um, I haven't. Uh, seen what this, you know, what this would be charged for in the stores. Um, so, but I'm, like I said, conservatively, conservatively an A, because 16 games in one tiny little box. I can't imagine that this is going to cost more than like 20, 25 dollars. And even at that, for 16 games in there and what you're getting, that is still a great price. So I think that this is a game. Let me just come right out and say it: an essential game 
for any primary classroom. So, let's take a look at what's inside the little tiny box. So the first thing you're going to find in the box is a couple of useful things. The first one I really like that they include is a guideline for, for grown-ups. So it just sort of talks about some of the things you might want to consider when playing this game with the kids. Like uh, learning takes time, be patient, think out loud. You know, as you are playing the game with them, demonstrate the, th uh, the learning process by doing your turn out loud and thinking, well, if I do this and then this, and by doing so, the students are going to learn based on your example. Uh, follow their lead. If they are doing something a particular way, don't force them to do it your way. Let them let them play their way. You take it there. You know, let them. The important thing is that they are having fun, not that they're playing by the rules, or but that that they are doing. Just let them have the fun. Let them do what they want to do because that's the important thing is that they want to continue to play because that will continue to mean that they're continuing to learn. Uh, use your fingers. So show them and demonstrate using your fingers to count, to add, subtract. Uh, help less. It doesn't mean be helpless, but help them less. Don't always be so quick to jump in and offer solutions and methods. Let them figure it out in their own way, in their own time. And play. It's play. Have fun and don't worry about winning and losing. Uh, so they also talk on the back here, so of a progression of different skills in the arithmetic, uh, habit of, habits of mind. I'll leave you to read these for yourself. I'm not gonna read those out loud to you. That would be terribly boring. And then they have a thing here with tiny polka dot instructions. And this is kind of cute because it's just one little page with nothing on the back. It's because it, uh, first part here shows the different card sets that are in there. There's these different card sets of different colored backs and they will refer to the backs of the colors when they'll say take um, the, the teal cards and the blue cards and the red cards for this game. Um, and then they talk about some of the things that you'll find on there. Now those aren't actually the instructions for the game because what you're going to find is you know as was mentioned you have the different colored cards. There's 66 cards of different colors and each of those cards has different things on them so the teal cards here you can see have dots and these dots appear like your standard six-sided die and then they go to seven eight nine and ten uh, so what we start to get into here is skills like you know being able to count uh, subitizing, where they realize that you know this here is one and two, so they start to make that relation between the number of dots and an actual number. So that's what a skill called subitizing. Then we can also look at where we realize um, something that's called conservation of number. Can't find it now. Where if I've got these two, even though they're in different configurations, both are four. So conservation of number. So a whole range of different skills. Like I said, look on my blog. I've done a whole spreadsheet up with all the different skills. So for each of the different games, I've listed what are the skills taught by that game. Now, when you're playing, what you're going to do is you're going to be looking at these. And these are the rules cards for each of the different games. There's eight cards. Each one is double-sided. It starts off, it gives you uh, the, the title of the game. It gives you the ages that it's appropriate for. In this case, uh, 15 Supreme is for ages 7 plus. The number of players, this one is 1 to 5. And for the first game, play with, and it gives you, says purple 0 to 10 and red 0 to 10. So I would get my red, and these are, the whole deck is 0 to 10. There's my 0. And um, I think these might have been shuffled. I was playing this with Timothy. And then these. And you see the purple ones actually have numbers on them. So we're just again making those relations between uh, a connection between what, you know, 10 may look like here and 10 looks like here, making that connection between the subitized dots and the actual number. Uh, and then so you know it has the, the setup, 
the play instructions. And one other thing I really, really like is that it's ideas for future games. So how to take the game to the next level. When they feel that this game is too easy, too boring, when they feel that they're ready to move on, or maybe you feel they're ready to move on, encourage them to maybe go beyond. But again, remember, if they're comfortable playing the game in that way, even if it feels too easy, let them. It's still just reinforcing, it's still just practicing, it's still just learning. It's all those things, and the important thing is, is that you want the gameplay to be fun. That is most important. So like I said, just I'll leave you to explore. I'm not going to go through all the different games here, 16 different games. If I did that, the, the review would be on forever and talk about all the different skills and things. I'm going to leave a lot of that for you to discover on your own, uh, but this game is absolutely amazing. I was astounded. Uh, as to how much was actually in this little box, because it is such a tiny little box, but it has so much game. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Um, I'm considering doing a uh, playthrough of this game with Timothy, just so you can see how some of the games are played, and just see how a child reacts when playing this game and some of the things he might be doing and enjoying and how, you know maybe some ideas of how you might teach it and uh, things you might be considering while you're playing with them. If you have any questions about Tiny Polka Dot, please leave me a message in the comment section below. If there's any other games you'd like to see done on this channel, again, leave me a message in the comment section below. Always love to hear from the viewers. Well, until next time, I'm Craig Thompson-Wood, the board game teacher, saying thanks for coming to the classroom.